In 2010, Fulham defied all the odds and made it to the Europa League final, but since then, it's been a roller coaster for Fulham fans. They have tasted relegation three times in the last 13 years. They're up and down like a yo-yo. But right now, they are 14th in the Premier League, and we're going to sort that out. I am becoming Fulham's new manager, and by the end of this video, I'm going to make them the best team in the world. But it's not going to be that simple as I'm spinning the wheel every single season, and this can make my life 10 times easier or a thousand times harder. So this is the starting 11 I've loaded into a Fulham and let's be honest boys this team isn't that bad at all the only real issue we've got is the age factor and half of our best players are actually over 30 years old as well and we've also got a stupid contract situation out where if we don't sort it out we're going to lose basically half of the team anyway but on the plus side we've got players like centre-back Issa Diop who's 78 rated who's not a bad player at all we also have a very solid keeper in between the sticks and Bernd Leno who's 81 rated and my favourite out of the bunch, Jao Paulinho, who's 27 years old, 83 rated, the best player on the team by a country mile. So all in all, boys, whilst this team does have its cons, it definitely does have its pros as well. Now, in terms of the tactical vision, this one's kind of tricky because, as I've already said to you, majority of this team are pretty old. We can't exactly use the Gagan press because they haven't got the pace nor the stamina to keep that up for the entirety of the game. Nor can we use the counter-attack because that requires a lot of pace on our wingers and our striker. I think going for the tick attacker style of play, is the best option for Fulham. We can pass rings around the opposition. They'll be chasing shadows and therefore we'll have the better opportunities. And our starting budget is 42 million on the dot. That's not bad for our first season in charge of Fulham. And after messing around with the team a bit, this is our strongest starting 11. But as you can see, there's still a lot of work that needs doing. For starters, we need a better striker than Jimenez because he's almost 33 years old and he's 76 rated. That isn't going to cut it in the prep. We also need better wingers. We need a better defence. And it's okay having all this money, but we've got a wheel to spare and one rule to follow. We are only allowed a maximum of two signings per season. And obviously, whatever the wheel lands on, we have to go through with it. And believe me, there's stuff on this wheel that can make our life ten times easier or could potentially relegate us. So we're spinning the wheel for the first time in the video. What's it going to land on? What's takeover? This looks very promising. Increase your budget by 100 million. That is absolutely phenomenal. What a start. And with that, we've now got 142 million in our budget. Boys, we can definitely put this money to good use. So now it's just a question of where to put this money. We can improve our defence, our midfield, our attack, but I think I've got a good idea of where I actually want to focus the money on. I want a better winger than Willie, and he's 34 years old, almost 35, he's 77 overall, and I'm willing to bet my house on the fact that that overall will not stay like that until the end of season one. And I also want a better striker than Jimenez, he's almost 33 years old himself. I mean, those stats as well, he's not exactly going to be banging goals in for fun in the Prem, is he? Obviously, I could focus focused on the defence, which I probably should, but I'm thinking long term. If we keep William and Jimenez in the starting 11 till season 2, we're definitely not going to be looking good. But before I make any signings, I'm sorting these contracts out because that way, at least I'll actually know what kind of money I've got to work with. And with that taken care of now, we've got 133 million in our budget. We've almost spent 10 million on contracts alone, for God's sake. It's a good job, though, that the two players I want to bring into the team, we can absolutely afford. The first one being Julian Alvarez from Manchester City. He's only 23 years old, 81 rated. He's been absolutely killing it at Man City of late, and look at his stats, man. He's absolutely going to be a baller for us. But to make this deal happen, we just spent over 45 million on Julian Alvarez, but I think it is a worthy investment for our future at Fulham. And with just inclusion of Alvarez, the team as a whole already looks a bit stronger, but we ain't done yet. We've got one more transfer to make. And that transfer is going to be Kingsley Coman from Bayern Muni, 85 rated, 27 years old. And once again, just take a look at this guy's stats, man. If you're telling me he isn't going to kill it in the Prem, I don't know what you're talking about. And that does conclude our transfer window as we've just spent a whopping 63.3 million to bring Kingsley Coman to Fulham. And with that, the team looks like this going into season one. And I've got to say, boys, I know that the defence still looks a bit shaky, but I reckon we're going to do quite well. Our front four is actually pretty solid with the inclusions of Alvarez and Coman. And we've also got an 81 rated keeper in Burn Leno in between the sticks. And in my experience, that definitely definitely pays off. Now, I'm not saying we're going to do anything spectacular, but I'm definitely expecting a mid-table finish at the very least, but I guess we're going to find out one way or the other. So, boys, we're at the end of our first year in charge of Fulham, and we've got them European football for season two. How the hell we pulled that off? I don't know. I'd have been happy for a mid-table finish. And just look who we beat to it. Spurs, Newcastle, Villa, West Ham. We really had a good season. But then we got knocked out of the FA Cup by Bolton. I mean, it just isn't consistent, is it? And we also got knocked out of the Carabao Cup by 
by Chelsea. I will actually take that back. We are consistent. Consistently bad in the Carabao Cup and the FA Cup. But when you look at the team, especially the likes of Alvarez, Komen, Paulinho, the growth has been brilliant. And Alvarez is our top goal scorer this year. 24 goal contributions, 42 games. He was worth every penny. But Bruh. Kingsley Komen wasn't. Six goal contributions in 32 games. What the bloody hell was this guy playing at? Gotta say though, boys, a very successful first season in charge of Fulham. It's just a matter if we can keep this going for season two. Remember, we've got European football now, but that wheel is the difference maker between having a very decent season and having a calamity of a season. But before we go any further, if you're enjoying the video so far, leave it a big old thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. So we're going to start season two by spinning the wheel. The last season, we had a really good choice. It looks like it's bad. What's this one? Swap your best play for Man City's worst. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Oh, I knew that wasn't going to last long. I mean, to be fair, our best player is Komen, and he only got like six goal contributions last year from 30 odd games, so we're not exactly going to miss him all that much. Well, the player we're going to be getting in return is Ben Knight. 62 overall, man. That is a massive kick in the teeth. He is worth between 820,000 and 660,000, and we legit spent over 60 million on Komen, man. Man City are getting a good deal here. So, I'm going to make it official. Kingsley Komen, he's worth 58 million, for God's sake. What am I doing? But I'm submitting the offer, and obviously, Pep isn't exactly going to say no to that, is he? And there he is, the player we've swapped for our best, the worst of Manchester City, Ben Knight. The good news, at least, we've got 73 million in our bank, but the question is now, because I've just done a player swap, does that only mean we've got one transfer? Let me know in the comments down below what I should do in this situation going forward. But looking at the team overall, I think I'm going to leave this defence alone for at least one more season. They really held their own last year. I mean, we got top six football, for goodness sake. Instead, I'm going to focus all the money on a better attacking midfielder than Pereira. Last year, we brought in a winger. That didn't work out so well. Maybe bringing in a better cam can help us score more goals. And in case you're wondering, I am only going to make one transfer, just in case this does actually technically count as cheating. And the transfer I'm going to make is bringing Shabby Simons to fall him. He's 83 rated, only 21 years old. He is within our budget, and just look at these stats, for goodness sake, man. If he doesn't improve the team, I don't know who will. And that is our most expensive signing yet, as we've just spent 65 million on Shabby Simons. And that does leave the team looking like this into season two, and I don't think we're going to do half as well as we did last year. I mean, aside from like four players in this team, it's bang average at best. We definitely need to start getting better luck on that wheel. But we did qualify for the Conference League. We're in Group G alongside Rio, Ava FC, FCSB, and Wolfsburger AC. Now, I actually think we can get to the knockouts in the Conference League. I definitely don't think we're going to win it, but I at least expect us to make it out of this group. So, boys, we've just arrived at the end of Season 2, and we are 13th in the league. I called it down the middle. We had a fantastic Season 1, but Season 2 was a massive reality check. Don't get me wrong, we were 13 points above the relegation zone, but realistically, with the talent we've got on the team, we've got to be doing better than that. This time, though, we got knocked out of the FA Cup by Arsenal in Round 3. We just can't do well in this competition, can we? But we did make it to the quarters of the Carabao Cup, only to lose 3-2 to Villa. You know what? I'll take that. But in the Conference League, we did end up topping Group G, and we go to the round of 16 without the prelim round, where we absolutely destroy SK Sturmgrass 5-0 on aggregate. Okay, this is looking promising. We also beat FCSB 2-0 in the quarters. And we've also beaten PSV 3-2 on aggregate. Boys, we could actually pick up our first piece of silverware. Or maybe not. We get beaten 2-1 in the final by Real Betis, so we're not in the Conference League, Champions League, Europa League. We ain't got no European football next year. Now, I'm not going to lie, boys. Looking at this start 11, I really am impressed by the growth. There's only a couple of players now under 80 rated. And once again, Alvarez is our top goal scorer, this time with 32 goal contributions in 55 games. This guy is worth every penny we spent on him. I called it down the middle, boys. I said we wouldn't do as well this year as we did last season. We finished 13th in the Prem, man. That's abysmal for the quality in our squad. But remember, we've got two transfers to make next year, and I reckon if that wheel's on our side again, we can definitely creep back into that top six. So we're now into season three with Fulham, and looking at the start 11, it's just our wingers and fullbacks that need improving because they're the weakest links in the team. We can only make two transfers per season, so I probably would go for two fullbacks, but let's be honest, boys, this team is coming on quite quickly. And we've somehow got 77 million in our budget, considering how poorly we did last year. That is very generous from the board. But we may have that amount of money, but without spinning that wheel, it means absolutely nothing. This is the third time of spinning this wheel. Is it going to be third time of charm? No way in hell we're landing on this again. Increase the budget by 100 million again. I swear 
swear to God, this is mad. So we've now got 177 million to spend on two players. If we don't get European football once again for next season, we don't deserve this money. Now, I did say I wanted to improve our fullbacks, and boys, that's exactly what I'm going to do. And starting with the left back, I'm going for Nuno Mendes from the Bottle Jobs. He's 85 rated, 23 years old. I mean, let's be honest, boys. This guy is a no-brainer, and the best part is this guy probably won't even dent our budget. But believe me, the Bottle Jobs didn't want to part ways with him that easily as we've just had to spend 67 million on him. And with just the addition of Mendes, that defence looks so much better. But remember, we've got one more transfer to make. And we've still got over 100 million in our budget. So for the final transfer of season three, I reckon we go massive. Now, I really want Trent Alexander-Arnold. He's 88 rated, currently playing for Barca, and he's worth between 111 and 88.9 million. Now, granted, we do have a lot of money, but this is still going to be quite tricky. I'm going to start by offering them 90 million. That's just above their lowest asking price. They only want 95.3 million. I'll tell you what, let's barter a little bit more because I'm a massive cheapskate. Let's go 92 and a half million. They've actually accepted it. I cannot believe we haven't had to negotiate more. And boys, it is official for 92 and a half million. Trent Alexander Arnold is a fallen player. I bet that's a sight you fallen fans thought you'd never see. He might be playing for a different team, but we've got to give him the number 66 shirt. Why is this game still broken, man? Why can't you fit two numbers on the same shirt? But this is the starting 11 going into season three. And I honestly think we're about three or four signings away from going to the Champions League final. Obviously, it's easy for me to say that, but we've actually got to qualify for it first because we've actually yet to get into the Champions League. But you never know, with this team, this season might be our year to get into the top four. So, boys, we finished our third year in charge of Fulham and we finished eighth in the league at the end of this season. We were nowhere near the top four, though, let's be honest. But looking back at the table, Aston Villa won the Prem, Newcastle finished second. What the hell is going on? We made it to round four of the FA Cup before getting knocked out by Manchester City. I just give up trying to win this competition. And we made it to round two of the Carval Cup getting knocked out by Portsmouth. Honestly, I don't even care about these competitions anymore. But just look at the team, man. I know that we finished eighth and didn't do exactly well in the FA Carval Cup, but this team is amazing. But stats-wise, it's looking pretty diabolical. Alvarez and Wilson basically carried us this season. Honestly, aside from finishing eighth in the Prem, we can wrap this year off because it has been absolutely tragic. Getting knocked out by Portsmouth and only reaching round four of the FA Cup. We've got to be doing better with the team we've got. And like I've already said, two or three more signings and I reckon we'll be challenging for the Champions League. I know after this season that sounds mental, but I absolutely believe it to be true. So we're going to start season four by spinning the wheel. We've been pretty decently lucky lately. Okay, rival. What is rival? Sign a player from your biggest rival. Okay, who's Fulham's biggest rival? Now after doing a bit of research, Fulham's four biggest rivals are Gillingham, Brentford, QPR and Chelsea. But it doesn't actually say who their biggest rivals are, so I'm just going to assume because they're playing in the Premier League, it's Chelsea. So if I am wrong, just roast me in the comments. But we do have a good choice of wingers. Noni Madweke, Modric, you got Cole Palmer, Raheem Sterling. They're very good options. But I am going to go for Modric. He's 81 rated. He's 25 years old. His market value is actually decent, so it'll leave us a bit of money for our second transfer. And boys, for just over 36 million, we have signed Modric on a four-year contract. Now we've got 42 million left to spend and we've got one more transfer to make. And I want to put that money into a better right winger than Wilson. He's 80 rated and now he's the weakest link in the start in 11. So I am going to bring in Pedro Neto from Wolverhampton Wanderers. He's 83 rated and 28 years old. I think this is a great choice personally. Look at those stats, man. He can definitely do well for us at Fulham. And that wraps up our transfer news. We've just spent 27 million to bring Pedro Neto to Fulham. And now the team looks like this going into season and four and I've just noticed Mikel and Modric sort up to 82 rated already I can tell already this guy's going to be a good signing I think this is the season we get Champions League football I'd be very disappointed if it wasn't and I didn't even realise this but we've got Conference League football once again we're in Group D alongside Victoria SC Hadjok Split and I'm not even going to try and pronounce that last team's name now last time we were in this competition we got to the final with a far weaker team than we've got now so surely to God theoretically at least we should be winning this competition so boys, we've just arrived at the end of season four and we've finally done it, man. We've got Champions League football. It's taken us four seasons to do it, but we bloody did it. And this time, we actually made it to the quarters of the FA Cup, losing 2-1 to United. You know what? I'll definitely take that. But we only made it to round four of the Carabao Cup, losing to Brighton. 
that I don't accept. We're in the Conference League. We once again topped the group and we skipped straight to the round of 16. Where we absolutely demolished Besiktas 5-2 on aggregate. Jesus, have mercy. We then go on to once again beat PSV in the quarterfinal. But our dreams are crushed in the semi-final. Bloody hell, Atalanta battered us. Well, looking at this team, boys, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't know how we didn't win that Conference League, man. This is a very strong squad. Well, the stats this year definitely look better with Alvarez once again being our top goal scorer with 42 goal contributions in 55 games. This has been our best season yet. Top four in the Prem. We made the quarters of the FA Cup and we made the semis of the Europa Conference League. I can't really complain at that. But looking at this team, depending on what that wheel gives us next year, we just need two or three more signings and I reckon we're actually strong enough to properly compete in the Champions League. So it's now our fifth year in charge of Fulham and as you can see from the coaching system, I have been very busy making sure we've got the best of the best. And looking at this team, all we need is a better goalkeeper than Leno and a better midfielder than Lucic and this team is ready for the Champions League. And this time we've got 120 million to spend but as always boys that doesn't mean anything until we spun the wheel. This is the fifth time we spun this wheel man. Let's hope that we actually get something decent. What the hell is oops. Oh this doesn't look good. The crucial starting teams overall by two. Oh you're kidding me. Trust us get this just as we qualify for the Champions League man. This couldn't have come at a worse time. And there it is, boys. Everybody in the starting 11 has been downgraded in an overall by two. That's just unbelievable. But it's shown we desperately need a better goalkeeper than Leno and a better midfielder than Lukic. I mean, if we can sort those positions out, regardless of the downgrades, we may actually do all right this year. And let's be honest, boys, with 120 million, we're not exactly shy of funds to sort this out. And starting with the goalkeeper, I'm going for AC Milan's Mike Magna. Just look at his stats, man. He's 89 rated. Do I really need to say any more? And all things considered, I think we've got a bargain. Is we've only have to spend 54.7 million on him. And just look at the difference already with a world-class keeper in their starting 11. And we've still got 57 million to spend on one more sign and I think I know just who to bring in. I want to bring in Enzo Lloydis. He's 85 rated. He's 26 years old. The only problem is he might be a little bit too much. We do have 57 million though so I'm going to offer about 52 million as a starting price. They want 70.1 million. Okay. We ain't going to do this without a player swap. Who can we give them? Why don't we actually give them Lukic? He's worth 27 million. That means we can bring the price down significantly. So alongside Lukic, I'm offering 42 million and a 5% silent clause. Hopefully this is enough. Oh, they've actually accepted it. Oh my God, I cannot believe Roy Hodgson's actually gone for that. And boys, for 42 million alongside Lukic, we have now got Enzo Lloyd is playing for Fulham. I cannot believe we've just pulled that off. And with that, our transfer news done. And this is the starting 11 going into season five. And I'll be real, boys, even though nine of the players in the starting 11 have had a decrease in overall you genuinely can't tell with most of them i'm gonna go out on a whim and say this i actually think we're gonna do pretty well in the champions league despite what's happened with this with that wheel and speaking of the champions league we're in group b alongside barcelona porto and salty that is a pretty tough first group to be in but i still think that we'll go through to the round of 16 i just don't see how porto or salty will have a stronger team than us right now so boys we have just arrived halfway through season five and we are in the top four and to be honest it is very tight at the top only six points separating ourselves from league leaders Man City. I don't think it's entirely crazy to say we could go for the title this year if we perform well for the rest of the season. As for the Champions League, we finished second behind Porto and Barcelona in the Europa League. Now, who the bloody hell saw that one coming? And so far, Alvarez is being amazing. 27 goal contributions in 28 games is genuinely ridiculous. And just to update you guys, this is the team that's going to go into the knockouts of the Champions League for the very first time. And I'm sticking by what I said, even though the majority of this team got a downgrade in overall, we still have a good chance of doing well in the knockouts. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying we're going to win it, but with players like Mike Magnan in goal, Trent Alexander-Arnold in the defence, Joao Polinia in the midfield, and Xavi Simons and Julian Alvarez as our attackers, I don't see a good reason why we can't do it. But up first, boys, in the round of 16 is Atletico Madrid rocking that patented five at the back formation. They're still a scumbag team, aren't they? But one from the R is a very tough team. We are at home in the first leg. How are we going to get on? It's a two-all draw. Okay. Baddy Sheely, Xavi Simons, Lino, and Alexander-Arnold gain the goals. This is going to the second leg. I really don't want to be knocked 
out in the round of 16, man. I know it's Atletico, but surely to God we can pull something out of the bag. Yes, we do. Julian Alvarez. What a signing this guy's become, man. What a player. And the team we're facing in the quarters is AC Milan. Mike Magnan's former team. He definitely isn't going to want to lose against these guys. But we all once again start in the first leg at home. So let's see if this time we can pick... Oh, my God. Neto with the brace and Xavi Simons with the third. That I didn't see coming. I knew we were a good team, but Milan aren't a pushover either. We are in a phenomenal position for the second leg, but I don't want to settle for a draw. I want a convincing win. Okay, maybe I will have to settle for a draw, but we do beat them 4-2 overall on aggregate, and we are in the semi-final in our first attempt in this competition. But now we've got a difficult game. Manchester City in the semis, the current reigning Champions League winners themselves. And for once, majority of our team doesn't look massively fatigued. We are away from home in the first leg, and it is a one-all draw. Wow. Considering the firepower both teams have got, I'm surprised we've only got one goal a piece. But not only is our team knackered for the second leg, Xavi Simons is suspended. Oh, this isn't good. This really isn't good. Let's get into it. Oh my god, we've actually done it! Julian Alvarez and Modri 2-1. We beat them 3-2 overall, boys. We have got Fulham to the Champions League final in our first time in this competition. And in that final, we're facing Inter Milan. Mike Magnum really isn't going to want to lose this game, is he? We're heading back over to the league. We've actually won the Premier League by five points in the end. Manchester City with nine points below us in the end. We were superior in the Champions League and the Premier League. And we made it to the semis of the FA Cup this time, losing to Newcastle United. I'm not going to lie, that's really gutty. And we also made the final of the Carabao Cup, losing to Bloody City. Well, I suppose getting the title and a Champions League final is a little bit better than the Carabao Cup, so we'll let them have it. But look at these stats, man, especially Julian Alvarez. Over 50 goal contributions in 60 games. Do you know how mad that actually is? And looking at the team for the final, nobody's injured, nobody's suspended. Suspended. Everybody's looking good. We are ready for Inter Milan. And the mad thing is, considering the starting 11 got a downgrade in overall by two, you wouldn't actually notice it, man, because they've all grown really well again this year. And so far with Fulham, we've won the Premier League title and we've won the Conference League and we've come very close to winning the FA Cup this year. But now we've got the chance to win the biggest one of all, the Champions League. Modric's now on the ball. We all know how good this guy's been as well. Oh, this is beautiful. This is fantastic. Nuno Mendes, we could hit them where he it here. Julian Alvarez, great save. Well, to be fair, it wasn't really a great save. It was straight down his throat. Alexander Arnold's now on the ball. We all know this guy can pick a pass out. I'm waiting for that run. That is beautiful. Pedro Neto's away. He's on to his left foot now. Oh, we've done the def. Oh, this is beautiful. Oh, the bloody touch. The last touch let him down. Julian Alvarez is on the ball now. I'm looking for that run from McCallum. Mudrick, please get to that. Falls to Lloydis on the outside of the box. Xavi Simons. Julian Toon. Hit it. Blood into Milan. Let me have a shot on goal, will you? Xavi Simons on the ball. He's got options here. Can he make the right one? I think he has. Neto inside. Alvarez, this has got to be it. Thank God for that. It took us almost 60 minutes, a full hour of playing against Inter Milan, and we finally got a goal. We have had so many chances, so many opportunities, and we finally taken one. And to be fair, it's one that wasn't actually blocked. Xavi Simons is on the ball. Can we see that run from Julian Alvarez? Yes, we can. Okay. Alvarez versus Bastoni. We're going to cut inside. Get on his bad side. Yeah, I think we've got that. Yes, we have. Alvarez for the second of the game. Seven minutes after he scores the first. He takes Bastoni out on his left foot. Bang, get in. Inter Milan aren't giving up just yet. They've got a shot and they've had it. What? I don't even know what's just happened there. All I know is Inter Milan have got a goal back. Oh, EA, what are you playing at? It was Giovanni Reina who scored the goal, man. They get one opportunity. It's in the back of the net. Bloody EA interrupting my recording sessions. Who do you think you are? We do have just over five minutes left in this game, though. We all done. We have made Fulham the best team in the world. But we've got to get there because they're on the attack right now. Hoyland is on the ball. He's fed into Young. We've got to get this ball out. Great clearance. Dying seconds of the game. Good Chavez is on the left-hand side of the pitch. We're double-pressing him. That's gone for a cut. That's not what I wanted to happen there. The keeper's coming up, for God's sake. This is the last chance of the game. We've got to make sure we either keep it out. Oh, no. Get it out. Please, get there first. No. Do not let the keeper score. It's come out to Gonchalves. Once again, we're defending for our lives here. In the dying seconds of the game, they somehow got it in behind. Please, get a tackle in. We're tackling, but we got... No! Great save from Magdan. That's got to be it. Six minutes extra time added on. Thank God 
for that. My heart was literally in my mouth. But we held out. We parked the bus. We took everything that they had. It wasn't enough. We have beaten Inter Milan 2-1 in the Champions League final. We've made them the best team in the world. It took us five seasons and we went through hell giving Man City our best player, downgrading basically the entire starting eleven. But in the end, as always, we bloody did it. And if you want to see more content from me, you should definitely click here to watch me rebuild Liverpool Ladder Edition.